Which Side Podcast is a proud member of the Which Side Media Collective. This episode is brought to you by no one in particular. But you really could bring us the next one. And we'll say whatever you want. Yeah, if you want to sponsor an episode, it's it costs us about $10 to produce an episode. So that's all we're going to ask of you guys. $10, you can have a show. We're not here to make money. I mean, it would be nice, don't get me wrong, but I just don't want to be losing any more money. Yeah. yeah. That sucks when you lose money. A lot. To provide people with free content. <laughs> it's true. But it happens. So go to our website, wishsidepodcast.com. Click on Donate. Sponsor an episode. Tell us what you want us to say. We'll be your puppet. Dance. They can't see what I'm doing, but I am doing an amazing macarena. And I'm doing the salsa. This is episode 83. That's I a think. Lot. That's a I lot didn't I didn't really check, but I'm pretty sure it's 83. I don't know. Who do we have on this week? Chuck a brick. Chuck from 643 Podcast. He was in Bombs and Beating Hearts. Fact. Our very first sponsor of the show, actually. Los Reaction as well as Ex Chubby Kids. And, <laughs> and a number of others. I had a lot of fun. We talked a lot, quite a bit about sports. I'm not a sportsy person. Um, so I asked questions. So, yeah, make fun of me for that. That's cool. What events do we have going on this week? Check out June 11th, wherever you are. I'm sure that someone is hosting an event. It is the International Day of Solidarity with Marie Mason, Aaron David, and all eco-prisoners. Personally, there's going to be a zine that I contributed to called After Prison that's being released that day as well. Um, So just check your local area on that day and find out what's going on. June 11th. I'm marking that on my calendar. But on June 9th, 1902, Washington State passed an anti-anarchist law. (laughs) No more detail? That's it. That's all the slingshot gave me. Oh, I want to know more. I know. I I want to know so much more. I want to go to Washington and be like, I'm an anarchist. Don't arrest me. Or do. I'm an anarchist. I'm Um, supposed to spot. I really, I'm going to lurk more into that one. Uh, But I love these slingshot. If you like these every week buy it it's great support the collective the slingshot collective not ours i mean you should do both but (laughs) yeah um hope you guys enjoy this one How are you doing? I'm good. Good. Let's see. Sorry, I was just taking a quick swig of my drink. Sounds a little robot done. Does it on your end? Yeah. Yeah. How does it sound to you? Uh, sounds, you guys just sound echoey as all, but I'm sure that's probably because you're using the mic on the laptop or something. Yeah. We're just using the computers. Yeah, internal mic. Yeah, how how everyone hears the Skype from our end is just the internal mic, which is a really shitty mic, even though we don't capture that at all. We just record oh. into our individual mics. It's a weird setup. Yeah, you you hear better. You you hear worse quality than what when is recorded. What's recorded? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, it sounds good. It sounds better now for us. It was a little roboty. Okay, we can fixed. stop and restart, or I and think I'm it recording. Itself. I'm good. I'm recording my vocals on my computer, so if all else fails, I can just send you the track with my vocals on it. Sweet. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I have to get practice doing that because I have to do that for uh, another podcast that's going to be coming out where there's going to be three hosts all recording their own ends, and I have to meld them together. Yeah, that that's going to be the vegan parenting podcast. Vegan parenting podcast that I'm not interested in at all. 
<laughs> I'm actually kind of excited about that one myself. Yeah. Um, cause, uh, sorry, the dogs are fucking wrestling under the table. Sweet. Um, the, uh, that parenting podcast. So I'm, cause Shay and I plan on being vegan parents Sweet. someday in the I future. Thought, so I thought you were just about ready to drop the bomb. Like I'm actually really excited cause Shay and I are pregnant. And I was like, damn, that's some no, juicy still, gossip. That we, we haven't pulled the goalie yet. No. <laughs> so uh, you, you want to become a breeder? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what scares you about being a vegan parent? Um, I just don't want to fuck it up and I don't want to be my dad. <laughs> so that's much. just parenting that has nothing to do with the vegan part of it <laughs> yeah i just as time goes on i just see more and more ways i'm slowly becoming my father oh um, me too if i have a kid it's just gonna be more glaringly obvious not that he was a bad dad or anything it's just kind of creepy you know with me it made me hyper aware of how it was like my parents but being hyper aware of it makes it so i can be like oh i'm being just like them i shouldn't so, yeah, I it think was, it's good to I, be aware. Yeah, I'm sure there's things that your parents did that were like positive, and you want to emulate that. But mm. they fed me. <laughs> yeah, that's always good. I don't know. Vegan. Yeah. After I became vegan, that's yeah. good. Yeah, it's a good start. Um, they did beat me a little, not like extreme, but like what you people, got the belt. Yeah. Bread belt, did uh, you bread deserve, board. Actually, did you deserve it though. Uh, Wait, uh, a breadboard like electronics device? No, like a breadboard, like a board that you like a cutting board made for bread. Oh wow! They're like I got the wooden spoon, but never. I, a I'd like board. to see somebody with like an electronic breadboard. <laughs> so like so small. I like, know. <laughs> so it's just like bam. That would leave some welts. <laughs> um, I got spanked with a ping pong paddle. That's a good spanking, though. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. your dad, like, plays ping pong professionally or something. He right? used to, yeah. yeah. He used to. Okay. He's got a long family history of professional ping pong players. Yeah. Let, let's be really clear. Ping pong is the name of a brand that made a table. It's really called table tennis. I, My dad would shoot me that I even used the term to begin ping with. Ping pong. Yeah. Oh. I, uh, I actually got a funny, speaking of ping pong... I got a text the other day. I just got this text in the middle, like three in the morning from a random number. I don't know. They just said ping pong is starting. <laughs> <laughs> and I replied, that's good to know. I like ping pong as much as the next guy, but I need details. And then they replied back, sorry, wrong number. And I just said, no ping pong for me. And they never said anything. Oh, that's, uh, that's too bad. There, there's actually some great. Maybe I'd make a friend. <laughs> <laughs> start per- start playing ping pong with some random person. <laughs> yeah. That's there, awesome. Th- there's some great local table tennis clubs, like if you really are interested. Um, But they're serious. Yeah. Yeah. Do you still have your table? I, I can't take uh, ping pong or table tennis, excuse me, seriously. That's because you've never played it for real. Every time I play it, it's just a big joke. Yeah, that's what I mean. Because I have a friend who's really good at it, and mm-hmm. when he and he has a table, and he, when he plays, he puts on MMA shorts. <laughs> yeah, and he yeah. like just so that he can move around. Talks like you wouldn't believe. Is he is he really good or just okay? Um, as far as I know, he's really good. I mean, I haven't like been to tournaments or whatever, but he has a table and literally like. I, I I just have pictures of him in my head, like that the scene from the montage from Forrest Gump of him just <laughs> playing table tennis with himself. Like I'm pretty sure he just does that in his spare time. Does he have a robot? Um, no. But if uh, that probably just means that he doesn't know they exist because he's the kind of guy that'd probably buy one if he knew they existed. Okay. Well, then I'm pretty sure I could hold my own with him then. <laughs> probably. <laughs> He gets under your skin, though. He's really, uh, really uh, psychological when he plays. I'm, I'm that douche that actually owns the robot to practice. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm gonna say that I got <laughs> decent in prison. Decent. Decent. Yeah, but prison you played decent, with sandpaper too. Yeah, which yeah. was harder. Sandpaper. No, sandpaper grips the ball so hard you can put an amazing spin on it. <laughs> 
It's actually illegal oh, like, to use. You put like grip tape on the paddle. Yeah, yeah. yeah instead it, of rubber, it's yeah. They oh. they outlawed it. I mean, so you could put 50s. some serious English on the ball and yeah, it yeah. it rips the ball wow. to shreds. But yeah, it it you could really. So you got those like old grandpas that were playing, and they're just like, there's no way to win with them. Oh no, it's no, like, they know how to like, use those paddles. Yeah, it's, it's like, like spitballing in baseball. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And they got a, um, I don't know, like the ball will, they'll, they'll shoot it to your left shoulder and then it'll hit the left side of the table, bounce onto the right side. It's like, mm-hmm. what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. It's crazy. Speaking of, uh, baseball though, cause that he, he said spitball. So that's yeah. my segue. Yeah. Um, I saw a shirt the other day on Instagram and it said like, say no to to chew with the no chew crew or something like that and it had an a with like triangles and i'm like that's the arizona diamondbacks i don't know how i knew that but it was was yeah the arizona Arizona Diamondbacks. diamondbacks were the first uh baseball team to ban um tobacco in their clubhouse really hold on yeah i didn't even know any baseball team banned tobacco yeah there's a few um i know that the diamondbacks were the first one i don't know if it still stands or not but they were the first ones to say you can't be you can't have it in the clubhouse. If players want to do chew or smoke on their own time outside of the clubhouse, they're allowed to. But the I, and I don't know how they do it with the visiting players. But the at home players are not allowed to have tobacco anywhere in the clubhouse hmm. or the dugout. The second part is, is I've never even heard the name Arizona in the Di- Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks. I've yeah. never even heard that name. Is that a Triple A team? No, no, that's a major league baseball major league. team. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's it. It was more surprising. Have you ever heard to of a? Uh, sorry, uh, I was just saying it was more surprising that I knew that it was the Arizona Diamondbacks. That's I, not just right. You were way into baseball as a kid. Yeah, Arizona. They were purple back then. Purple and well, green. They were they were an expansion team when when we would have been or you would have been into baseball, Jordan. So it's not surprise. Like there would have been a lot of marketing to I yeah know, being a geek. That, that's true. <laughs> it's true. There was there was a lot of marketing. I think they like I had a bunch of their shit when I was into it. So when I was a kid, they were like a triple A team. Is that what you're saying? No, they were they were an expansion team. So in like 1990, it was either 93 or 96 when they were established. Mm-hmm. Um And so they were and because it's Phoenix, Arizona from Salt Lake City, Utah, like pretty close proximity so they were pushing really hard to um get fa- get a fan base going same with like colorado rockies, rockies are always yeah yeah they're a little like a half hour closer colorado time, has but... a baseball team yeah the rockies jesus christ i knew they had a football holy team. shit see i know this stuff i'm not into sports but i know this stuff at least yeah you just like wow <laughs> you, you know you know about you know about Chicago's team, right? The Bears, right? The White Sox. <laughs> just say that to fuck with you guys. Oh, Camden's like blood's boiling I, right now. I played football, this. so I know a little bit about football. Yeah, that's the that would be the Bears. The Bears, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They had yeah. the Fritch, the right? Bears, yeah. Go Bears. Yeah, uh, was it Williams or Phillips? I don't really do. We don't. Yeah, I fucking hate football, but yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I know I said, who Fridge is. What's Fridge? He was a big fat guy. His yeah. last name was Williams or Phillips, but he's just a huge guy. He was the size of, or his name might have been Fridge, but he was the size of a fridge, and he was the fridge. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I had a math teacher growing up named Miss Wells. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm not gonna be rude. Miss <laughs> Wells? Yeah. Let's just leave it at that. I'm not gonna be rude. I I had a speaking of funny names. I had a librarian. The only reason I know this librarian's name was because of the very first day of school. They said you cannot make fun of her name, and then we're all like, "Oh, that's the librarian's name." Because who the fuck knows the librarian's name? Her yeah. name was Gaylord Faggot. That's a terrible <laughs> name to have. Yeah, I'm I sorry would change for... it. I would she... just change my name. Like, yeah, she was married the... into Faggot, and her parents named her Gaylord. Who who names a kid Gaylord? That's the problem. Whatever, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but it, so you hate football? Why? Why hate football? That seems like so. 
I don't know. That gets down to the root of, of, uh, uh, just the, I don't like fucking overly macho shit, if that makes sense. No, because I, mean, I think watch... sports in general is overly macho. Yeah, but not like, just the, the attitude surrounding football is very, like, tough guy. I, I don't know. It's just, there. there's this little, like, undertone that just drives me away from it mm-hmm. but besides that it's just boring like it's boring to watch but that being said being a baseball nut i can totally see how people can go baseball's fucking boring there's just something about baseball opposite to football that's like it just it just like gives me some kind of feeling i can't even explain that i just get excited about baseball i i, I have no idea where it stems from it's just do you like yeah. hockey yeah, I like hockey as well. Wouldn't you this say is they the first have year like, I've been into hockey? Okay, because they would have like way more of a macho aggressiveness than football. I think. I think that's like mm, entertainment. That's though. perceived though. Like the cool thing about hockey, um, players you see players where they're like knocking each other out, getting in fist fights on the ice, and then after the game they'll go up and shake hands. Um, they uh, there's you know there's always the the case of there's players that are douchebags. Um, and, and will hold grudges and everything. And usually it's upper management, like ordering, like you need to go beat that guy up because last game we played against him, he hit our star player and we didn't get retribution on it and all that stuff. But, um, there's just this thing about it where like, I could see how somebody would say it's macho cause it's all tough and fighting and roughneck and everything, but it's, it's almost like a, I, uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Fuck. Nope. Um, yeah, but I, I don't know. Like the one thing that really turned me on to like, I should start watching hockey was when the basketball player, I can't remember his name, came out of the closet. Um, is that still a PC term to use? I don't know. Anyway, he came out as, as being gay and, uh, um, there was all this like stuff where people were saying all this shit back and forth. Um, and the NHL came out with a statement that just said, um, we don't care what your sexual preference or your uh, any of that. We don't care about it. If you play good hockey, there's a place for you in the NHL. And they were just like, everything else is whatever. So That's pretty sweet. That is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Today. And it, I do say I don't like macho stuff, and uh, but I like hockey because of the fights. I'm not going to lie. Do you like but, MMA stuff? Uh, once in a while. I don't seek it out, but if, like, it's on at a bar or restaurant that I'm at, I'll watch it and enjoy watching it, but I don't, like, buy the pay-per-view or go to MMA parties or anything. I think I could see myself getting into that, because, like, in prison, I, they, mm. they'd have it on TV, and I'd, I'd get into it. I'd choose a guy. I'd be like, red-haired guy, and they'd be all like, that's Kajubajowski, and I'm like, no, red-haired guy. <laughs> That's that's the extent. Right here, guy. That's the extent of my my involvement. But like, I really liked you know playing baseball and basketball, and and I did karate as well. But um, I never was into football either. That's the thing. I'm more like you, but I I just not into sports. It's just not my thing. I don't, I'm not anti sport. I'm not like ooh fuck sports, but it's just not my thing. Yeah, like I I would go to I'd go to a bees game. That sounds fun, you know. I think attending almost any sports, you know, could be fun, you know, but there's a difference between attending in person and watching it on TV. Yeah, I watched baseball on TV and hockey and I enjoy the shit out of it. <laughs> well, ho- you, like, like you were saying with like hockey, baseball also has that kind of brotherly thing where, you know, like the pitcher might peg some guy in the leg because he did something or other the oh yeah yeah like if uh if the pitcher from from one team hits the other team's center fielder then when that team's center fielder gets up he'll most likely get pegged as well yeah there's there's situations where it's clearly the ball just got away from the pitcher and he didn't Mm -hmm. mean to do it and they won't usually uh lash back on that but if it's clearly on purpose they'll do it almost every time especially Mm -hmm. in the american league they're really cutthroat yeah in the american league this is like it's like i just had the most confused look on my face what the fuck is the american league it's kind of so like so in major league baseball there's 
two leagues. There's the American League and the National League, and that's the best team from each league are the two teams that end up in the World Series against have, each other. They have slightly different rules too. Like uh, yeah, the bit the well, the only different rule is the uh, pitch hitter is yeah or the designated hitter. So yeah. in the American League, it's not real baseball because the pitchers don't hit. Um. I'm I'll, I get fired up about that all the time when I talk to people. Yeah. So and they that's why the Amer- American League pitchers hit batters more because they can throw a pitch, hit a batter, and they're not going to have to get up to the plate and risk getting hit. Where National League pitchers, they have to hit and get up to the plate and hit. So in the American League, they just have a designated hitter who doesn't play on the field; he only hits. Wasn't wasn't uh, yeah. McGuire? Uh, Mark McGuire wasn't he a? a uh, no, I think he played first base. Did he? If my memory serves me, one one of those guys was one. I feel like Talking one about of those Jerry Maguire. Guys. No, Mark Maguire. One of those home run kings. Okay, I feel was a pitch hitter or a bench. Yeah, Mark Maguire played first base. Okay, so um, this has turned into explain sports yeah. to Jeremy. What the fuck anyway. is the offsides rule in hockey? I hear people offsides? say like like oh it's complicated you don't get it I have no idea what the fuck they're talking oh, so about. So basically the the um the ice is divided into three zones. You've got uh, the neutral zone, which is between the two blue lines, and that's separated up by the red line in the middle, which doesn't have anything to do with offsides. But the blue lines are what determine offsides. So if you're the team attacking the other team's net, once you cross the blue line towards the opposing team's net with the puck, you can't uh, control the puck back across the blue line again. Or that's that's called offsides, and they blow the whistle, and there's a a face off that would be the the face off circle that's the closest to the blue line, and the closest to the place where the puck went offsides. I just confused the shit out of you, didn't I? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> I know. Basically, like if you were applied to basketball, it'd be like back courting once you were attacking the other net. Okay, you're okay, gonna have to step back and explain back courting. Really. Dude, I wow. don't know any of this shit. So you've seen a hockey rink before, right? Yeah, yeah. So let's say you've you, let's say you're playing a hockey game. You have the possession of the puck by your net, by your team's net. Uh-huh. So you get it and you race down the ice. Once you cross the blue line that's closest to the other team's net, you can't cross. You can't uh, pass or take the puck back over the blue line again. That's what offsides is. Oh, so, so you have to, that, from that point, you have to be moving forward. You can't move backwards. Yeah, well, you can move backwards. You just can't go across that line again. Okay, the puck. that makes sense. Unless if another, if the other team hits it out past the blue line, you can then retrieve it and come back over. But you can't be, you can't pass it over there or anything like that. That makes sense. Be in control of it. Okay, I get that. So how how difficult is being vegan with sports? Um... The hardest part is probably when you go to games, there's just not anything to eat other than like peanuts and sunflower seeds. What about like vegan baseball gloves and stuff? Um, and baseballs are baseballs leather too. Yeah. Baseballs are leather too. That's yeah. That's one thing that's kind of, kind of a downer is like, they're all playing out there with dead things, (laughs) but I don't know. I just, I have to look past it because I have such an enthusiasm for it. Um, is it, is it I was actually like pigskin, though. Sorry. <laughs> oh, footballs. Yeah, they're 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 leather, but I think it's uh, I think it's cowhide. Okay. I don't think they make it out of actual pigskin. I I don't know. So, do they make like alternatives for like kids who want to play? Like, do they make? I get the baseball's probably going to be leather, but do they make like a vegan baseball glove that are decent or yeah. cleats? Yeah, they that, do. that type of stuff. Um, that, yeah, you can find any like any cheap cleats, like uh, especially from big box stores, will usually be made out of man made materials because it's cheaper. Um, so instead of exploiting animals, you exploit children. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Which most kids are kind of dicks, so <laughs> kind of works out. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no, but there's vegan gloves, especially for toddlers. Like all the ones toddlers with like you know Disney characters on them are usually vegan. Yeah. And then, mm-hmm. 
Um, when you get into the adult size ones, they're pretty expensive or hard to find. I actually bought one. I played on a softball team, and I bought one that was supposed to be no leather, but um, when I got it, it was uh, the laces that held all the fingers together were fucking leather. Oh, <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah, and it sucks. was a no returns like clearance website I bought it off of. I was oh. just like, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, but I still used it because I'm like, well, shit, what do I do? Throw it away or something, you know? Like, but oh. once the, yeah, what the fuck break, you I'll do? just replace them with paracord or something and then it'll be a vegan glove, I guess. Would, would does paracord work as well? Yeah. Is okay. it, is it, is there any regulations for gloves? Like, um, no, you just can't have, uh, they, they can't affect the, the, well, for pitchers, they just can't have shit on their glove. Uh -huh. But all the other position players, it's just, as far as I know, there's no regulation on size. You don't size technically or anything have like to that. have a glove either, I'm sure. Um, no, enough. if I think they do require you to have a glove. Huh. Are soccer I, balls leather? Probably. I don't know. I don't know either. I was just thinking, uh, I really hope Chris from Propaganda is not listening on this episode because you just like. He's all about uh, sports, sports and hockey. <laughs> you hope he's not listening. Yeah, yeah, because then they just make Jeremy look like a fool. Well, I hope he's listening, so Jeremy looks like a fool. I, I'm, I, I am gladly will tell everyone my ignorance when it comes to this area. I, <laughs> just, yeah, I, I want to say that that Casey had a vegan. Uh, baseball glove i think he did but it was like really weird padded like it was almost like it looked like an old glove like uh you know like the styles that they used to have that were just really paddy looking gloves like web duck looking gloves you know what i'm talking about oh you can get yeah there's some vegan ones that you can find that are uh that are really crappily made so they look like an old style glove but it's just because it's shoddy workmanship <laughs> there's a company that makes them but you're paying like several hundred dollars for a glove yeah they do custom make it to your hand like they have you like trace your hand and make like measurements and stuff and send it in hmm. um and there's a there's i don't think there's any major league baseball players that actively play with them mm -hmm. but oh that actually reminds me a lot of the gloves that the major league baseball players are using are made with synthetic leathers because they're better materials that don't require the break-in because they go through so many of them and they probably they breathe wanna... easier too yeah so, so they'll use them sweaty. and then the same model like they'll have a signature model that they'll sell at the sporting goods stores with their signature on it and those will be made out of leather because it's less expensive as far as mass production goes huh it's not just blowing my mind like going the leather route is less expensive yeah it is weird well, when they're being made in China, the ones that Major League ball, ball players are used are custom fit to their hand and handmade. Yeah. And then the you know the ones you buy at uh, the sporting goods store are all you know child labor Chinese made I'd, stuff. I'd probably get some shit for this, but if I still have like the glove that I wore as a kid, I would use it to play. I don't know why you still get shit. It get shit for it. I mean, it's already broken in. It's. I mean, I tell everyone when they go vegan, don't just throw away your shit. Use it till it's done and then replace it with something that's vegan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have uh, guitar straps from before I was vegan and they're holding up and I'm just going to keep using them. Yeah, I, I see nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I, I actually think if you throw it away and waste it, it's actually worse than if you just use it because... At that point, it's like disrespectful. I, I think... Yeah. When, like, when growing up, my parents would buy me like some dress shoes or something that were leather and I'd always just keep them in the closet. I'd never wear them, but I'd never throw them away either. And I think like <laughs> it just got to a point where I just had like brand new shoes that I didn't wear all the time. Cause I'd always say, don't buy me these. And she, so I think like the next time she looked, she thought that she was getting me something that wasn't. And, and it was still leather. So I never threw them out. I just never wore them because that was the hard for me. Wearing shoes and stuff, I always felt like kind of like a hypocrite. I was lucky. Uh -huh. Like I was so young and so poor that all my shoes were always vegan regardless. Yeah. Yeah. And when, uh, when, uh, what's his face? Uh, Jeff, Jeff Rowley started when he sold out and started making 
non-vegan shoes i think i got i, I was so it. pissed yeah I I got See, what the fuck of, was oh, up with that it was like hunting or something yeah okay so he like kind of like going on like last episode he got into primitivism a lot he okay. started tracking animals as like a hobby and then he's like well i'm really connecting with these animals i feel like i can kill them now and so he started <laughs> hunting them after that like tracking them Ugh. super vegan then he started hunting them i should take that same ideology and apply it to my child i feel really connected with you i'm gonna fucking kill you it doesn't it doesn't make sense well as long as you say that god told you to you won't get arrested right <laughs> no, something didn't like somebody that. just get arrested for that though? Yeah, yeah. Like they, they killed they, like a two year old or something. Yeah, they tried to Abraham it. Yeah, yeah. Well, they weren't Mormon, or it's probably out of Utah. If no, you're Mormon, yeah. you get away with it because you're. <laughs> yeah, your they, state president will help cover it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they weren't Mormon. I think it was um, back east that she attended a sermon where they talked about the Abraham thing. Yeah, and then she said God told her to kill her son, but He never told her to stop. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I only read the headlines. It didn't quite make sense. I really only ever read headlines. <laughs> There's also uh two girls that One cup. Oh. They were children. Oh. And they shit. they stabbed uh So a little cup. They stabbed their friend to death or not to death, I think the friend lived, but they stabbed her sixteen times because they were trying to please Slenderman. Do you know who Slenderman is? That's that. Mm, no. I know that I'm not Slender Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 that thing that uh, it's like a a fake creature that kind of like I think 4chan or B or something invented or anonymous, <laughs> and it's so like an HP Lovecraft thing or something. It's, he he basically like they just got all these photos like and then they randomly photoshopped this like long slender looking guy into him, and apparently if you ever meet Slender Man, then you die. It's like one of those like stand in the mirror and chant Bloody Mary things. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's like a, a a playground game that involves stabbing your classmate. I guess so. That's what it does now. Like if like I guess Minecraft even based a character off of it called Enderman, and he's the same thing. If you run into him, the game ends. <laughs> like so, it like it's just weird that. It's, some kids like 12 year old kids took it out of context or that's what they're saying at least and stabbed their friend because of it trying to because of violent video games like minecraft exactly what are we gonna do play more minecraft (laughs) i have never (laughs) once even opened minecraft it's like legos that you don't have to clean up yeah i know jordan got it for my daughter and we're like what the fuck dude that's because i'm a good uncle (laughs) I've wasted so much time on Minecraft. It's ri- it's just ridiculous. You just I built-, built an entire uh, fully functioning baseball stadium. <laughs> concession stands. Of course you did. Uh, it took me probably uh, probably six hours a day for a week. <laughs> and when I got done, I was like, "Yeah, I'm done." And then, oh shit, I wasted all this time. I could have been gardening or something. Yeah. <laughs> you should have at least youtubed it just film the whole thing yeah that's what that's what people do and then i guess it's super popular kids just sit and watch hours and hours of other people playing minecraft oh my god <laughs> that's that's the internet for you i think your daughter does that she watches other people play video games yeah she'll youtube like uh mario and just watch people play mario yeah my nephew actually will sit and fall asleep watching YouTube videos of uh, tractors and excavators just digging holes. <laughs> I get that, though. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's just, he's, and uh, yeah, he loves riding on his, on uh, my father-in-law's backhoe that, that reminds out on the farm. Me. There's a theme park in Las Vegas that you can pay, and all you do is you play with excavators <laughs> like you get like huge backhoes and like earth movers and there that reminds me of like those 90 commercials that would sell those like huh. siri vhs tapes it's like trains planes and automobiles call 1-800 trains <laughs> i could see trains people get really into trains but yeah cars and tractors I'm, i don't get it yeah i had a uh a weird thing growing up that whenever we got stopped at a train crossing 
I always had to get out of the car and throw something at the train. <laughs> Your and parents like, had you do this? No, I just did it. I got in trouble every fucking time. <laughs> um, but I did this up until my early 20s, like even after we were married. Really? Yeah. What did you throw huh. at them? Anything. Fucking anything. Like, we were uh, at a trip. We were driving to Canada. This is with Callie. Okay. We we're driving to Canada. And we didn't want to stop. So what do you do when you don't want to stop? You fucking pee in a bottle, right? Uh-huh. So we had all these pee bottles. We got stopped by a train. So we threw fucking piss bottles at the train. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Did, was it sexually gratifying? No. That's what, it's like this weird <laughs> thing because you have this huge fucking train and nothing you as a person can do is going to stop it. Like. I, there's no way I'm stopping this train. I don't know those pee so bottles. I'm, I'm going to throw this effective. fucking like, half-eaten apple at you and watch it bounce off and be like, ha, take that fucker. Yeah, these days they wouldn't stop, but back my great-grandfather, who I'm actually named after, was a uh, like a security guard uh, policeman for the railroad, and he, would, uh, he was assigned to the line that would take the ore from the mine. Like uh, the the Kennecott Kennecott mine Copper up here? Mine. Yeah. Okay. Or Rio Tinto. Yeah. They. Yeah. Whatever. Um. And then yeah, he had this club that he had drilled the middle out and filled with lead, and carved a very racist saying on the side of it, <laughs> and uh, would um beat up hobos and would stop the train. They'd pull them off. They wouldn't even sight them because they didn't have any kind of, you know, back then it was back you know the, the forties. So yeah. He just beat the shit out of them with a lead filled club. And leave them on the side of the tracks and just oh, start geez. the train up and keep going. Jesus, fuck. Yeah. That's people like Ian, you know. He's train What's hopped. What's that? People like Ian, oh, he's yeah. train hopped. Hey, tra- train hopping it- seems way too s- risky and scary for me. I train hopped on tour for about 30 seconds just to see if I could get on the train. And I hopped right back off and then got in the van and we went to the next city. <laughs> 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 yeah i remember what when we were on tour one time uh we we eventually just broke down and got a hotel That's oh a yeah with that story. hitchhiker what, we made was... the hitchhiker sleep on the floor yeah yeah it, it, it could have been a lot better i was just done telling it hey, when i started telling it guess what guys one time i was in a car i got off the freeway <laughs> Like you, you like Honey LeBronx said a long time ago, have you ever like started telling a story and then when you're in the middle of telling that story, you're just like done, you don't care about it anymore? <laughs> That's where I was. <laughs> just, you know, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what's up. That's so, all that matters. So what brought you to veganism? Get this, this um, goddamn thing on track. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Uh, that's actually a multifaceted story. Um, yeah, I don't. I, it was so many different things. I can't even really peg one. But um, basically, I guess the the biggest thing that really got my gears turning on it was I when I was a, a teenager, I volunteered at the Tracy Aviary, mm-hmm. and uh, which for anybody who doesn't know, it's a zoo that's birds. It's an aviary. I and if right you look at them, what is it, the early 90s, a guy was fucking the flamingos? No, it was uh, sandhill cranes. Oh, sorry, sandhill cranes. I knew the guy uh, was it fucking wasn't one of me, them. But, um, yeah, they, they, uh, it was actually interesting. Um, it was like horrific thing, but because he did that, they were able to catch him, and then they were able to find out that he had like a bunch of human victims and... Uh, were able to bring him to justice because they couldn't find him for several years until he did that. So I didn't know the second part of that story. Kind yeah. of a silver lining in a really shitty cloud. Wow. That they brought this guy to justice that otherwise would have gone free, but he did kill the bird, but yeah. Anyways, you worked at Tracy yeah. Apiary. <laughs> yeah. I volunteered there for like seven years and just like, it just got my head turning about stuff and just going like, animals just aren't these like and i i had had pets and um you know obviously had connections with them but just started realizing that they're just as complex and have needs wants and feelings just like we do Mm -hmm. um and uh and then when i saw like there was an instance where they had some chickens that were um i don't 
I don't know if they'd want me telling this story, but fuck it. Uh, there was some chickens that were trained for the bird show. They would run across the run across the stage when they'd say, our next part of the show is the fierce predators, and some chickens would run across the stage. Um, and uh, one of those chickens actually got uh, a hawk, like, got at... The hawks are extremely smart, and this one oh. hawk uh, squills it when they went to go into its enclosure, like, knew exactly how to get out and was waiting right by the door and just d- went straight at the chicken because it knew right where it was and uh, grabbed it. The chicken survived and is on some – lives in somebody's backyard now, but – um yeah, it was, and when I, I was there when it happened and saw it happen and I was just like, holy shit, like it, yeah, I don't know. It affected me. And then that just got the gears turning and I tried mm-hmm. going vegetarian several times, but it wasn't until I had a good, uh, support group with some friends that backed my decision that it actually took hold. And yeah, those friends being like bombs are beating hearts and mm-hmm. Jordan and Yeah. So, so were you vegetarian for a while first or you just went right to veganism? Um, about two months because I realized that anything that was vegetarian, like 90% of it was vegan anyway. And it was easier to just be like, I'm just going to be vegan. Yeah, that's cool. And yeah. the whole thing, like if you, you know, if you consume dairy products, you support the meat industry. So mm-hmm. like... Every time somebody's like, "Oh, I do, I'm vegetarian," and I always ask them, "Well, why are you vegetarian?" They say, "For animals," and I'm like, "Then you're fucking dumbass." <laughs> I actually talked. Not to usually girl. the best way to handle the situation. <laughs> one girl that I worked with, she went vegetarian, and she said she said she was doing it for the animals. And I talked to her for like an hour, and then the next day she was eating a Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So that's a, that's a new one. You you hear the fish eating vegetarians or the oh my god or the I chicken don't eating even vegetarians get me started on that. <laughs> oh, but a Big Mac. Hmm. So yeah. what what led to the choice of uh, volunteering at Tracy Avery? Um, I've always uh, I've always been into birds big time, like mm-hmm. just as much as baseball. Um, anybody that's ever ridden in a car with me knows that I'll be like, Oh, look at that red tail hawk over there. And they'll be like, I can't fucking see anything. Like, I'm like, it's right there flying around. It's like, I can't see that. Or they'll be like, how did you see that? It's like a fucking dust speck. Um, but I've just been really into birds and, uh, there's something with my mom, one of her clients at work told her about it when I was 12 and they had a youth volunteer program and it was specifically in the bird show. So you got to we got to handle the birds they don't do that anymore but when i was there like i got and they did a volunteer show where the volunteers did the bird show once a year and everything so i really got to work like hands-on with all the birds in the bird show and handle hawks and eagles and stuff when i was yeah it was yeah it was really cool i liked a lot kept me a lot of the kids that i hung out with um that time in my life they ended up being like drug addicts and shit Mm -hmm. and i'm pretty sure that if I hadn't had the aviary, that I probably would be a junkie. So, are you into like bird watching? Um, not so much uh, anymore, just because I don't have the time. Mm-hmm. But there was a time where I would just go down. I lived pretty close to the Jordan River Parkway, and when I grew up, and would just go down there on my bike with binoculars and a field guide, and just like just look for birds for hours. I've always I've always been told by people that are really into it that's a really awesome like almost meditation type of thing to do but I don't I it's not my thing yeah it's like it's kind of like full contact where's Waldo okay yeah yeah (laughs) speaking of Tracy Aviary they do free bird watching in Liberty Park huh yeah like uh, the aviary is a program or something yeah I I was uh, I was walking in Liberty Park the other day and uh, they had like a booth set up and they had a whole bunch of binoculars and it said free bird watching and, and Trace the aviary was plastered oh. all over it. That's cool. I thought there's bird a watching lot of was always a, free. They well, the, the yeah, they'll give you guides and binoculars yeah. and stuff to use. But just right outside yeah, the, the aviary. Liberty Park's a really good place to bird watch. There's you'd be surprised how many different species there are in that park. Yeah, I just look at the aviary. 
Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. In Liberty Park. Yeah. There's hundreds of them. They're There's all in cages, so you don't have to really look that long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I Except hear for the peacocks and guinea fowl. They're <laughs> just walking around everywhere shitting on everything. <laughs> so so how did you get involved with Bombs and Beating Hearts? Um I just I was just met uh Robin in uh Robin, the drummer in high school, and he ran away from his parents. And then when he uh, got that all handled and was an adult, he moved pretty close to the house I was living in with my parents. So we just hung out all the time and I played guitar. So we just started and I had played in electric bands and stuff. And we just started realizing all the local bands were angry, pissed off punk rockers and, uh, especially endless struggle and they were always, they always had this like tough guy like persona at least to us um and we were always like well, let's do a band and play a show just one show that's everything completely opposite of endless struggle so we just got acoustic instruments and started writing joke songs about how much we loved people and uh yeah <laughs> that's and, pretty much how it worked out endless struggles super local I think uh, I they probably toured before um, with casualties and stuff, but they're they're pretty much like yeah they were on uh, anti flag records yeah. yeah no they they got pretty they big. got pretty big yeah yeah I don't know if yeah, yeah not they like played huge, a couple but... dates a warped tour like two or three dates or something okay like that, yeah think. yeah yeah I, I went to a house show yeah I'm done <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean they're nice guys don't get me wrong it's just the from my perspective at the time it was like oh they're so pissed off and angry and it was like can we do a band and do the exact opposite but still fall under the punk umbrella and we did it as a joke but after our first show all of our friends were like that was really fucking awesome you should do it more so it just kind of stuck well, there's something called like endless snuggles <laughs> oh yeah we always every time we saw Bobby Bobby struggle was a, as a singer every time we saw him places we'd go oh my god it's Bobby snuggles <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was but funny. he never caught it. It was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so did you do you maintain that kind of almost joke mentality throughout the band or? Um. Well, yeah, like we had the songs and it was all about fun. Um, I think the thing that kind of undid the band was um, and this is just my perspective. I don't know about the other members, but it just kind of like some people wanted to play music with a message and um. Other people just wanted to have fun and play music, and it just kind of had us. I think that was the catalyst that kind of burnt out the whole thing. If that makes sense, yeah, yeah. I don't, that's and that's just my perspective. I don't want to like. I, I'm sure that if you talk to Robin or Billy or Ian, you'd have a completely different stories from each of them. But what about that's, Griswold? That's kind of my uh, the kidding. informant, <laughs> <laughs> Griswold Barhans. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, yeah I try not to think about that kid. Yeah, this is way inside stuff. I have no idea what the fuck you're talking he's, about. He's oh, a... we had a bass player. He was this kid that just kind of showed. It was when Bombs of Beating Hearts was very into the Boeing Anarchist Collective, mm -hmm. um, and this kid started hanging out around there. I think his real name was Justin, but we just called him Griswold. Um, and he just approached us one day before he played a show, and we were like, and he was like, "Hey, I learned all your songs from your CD on my acoustic bass," and we were like. Oh, sweet. And he's like, I brought it. Can I play with you guys? We were like, sure. <laughs> I just did a show like, all right. So we let him play and we didn't even know what his name was. So on stage, Robin was just like, this is our ba our new bassist, uh, Griswold Bearhands or Bearhans. <laughs> and then after the show, he's like, so when's practice? I'm in the band now, right? We're like, uh, sure. <laughs> And then we played uh, Planet X Fest yeah. um, later that, like the next summer. And we did this whole tour all around playing one show at Planet X Fest. And uh, he played with us the whole way out. And then we were all doing stuff earlier that day around town because it was a big festival. And we were just like, hey, uh, just be at Boxcar Books at this time. And time rolls around and Griswold's nowhere to be found. And... Uh, yeah, he was getting his dick wet while we were playing our show, so we left his ass in Indiana. <laughs> it was it was a full on maroon. It was pretty bad. I I feel bad about it, kind of, because then he went on to sit in a tree 
He's like, well, I guess I'm stuck here. I'm going to go tree sit. And then they all get arrested. Yeah. Well, at the last minute, I went to him and I was like, hey, man, I don't want to leave you here. I'd feel really shitty. Um, It's going to be really awkward, but it's my vehicle. So if you want to come back, we'll take you back. And he's like, no, I'm going to go do this protest thing. So and I said, well, good luck with that. And we dropped his stuff off at his house. So. <laughs> But we left his ass in Indiana. He was like 16, right? <laughs> yeah, he was underage, and we didn't have... His mom knew where he was, but we didn't get, like, a permission slip. We're so lucky we didn't get pulled over. Yeah, I, I, I look back on some of that shit, and I'm just like... God. Because uh, transporting a minor across state lines is not, you know... Yeah, we were 18 um, at the time. Yeah. Like, it was, like, a month before I turned 19, so it was, like, two years different, so it's not like we were, like, creepy, like, <clears throat> like 30-year-olds taking a underage kid across state lines or yeah, anything. But we but... still we still okay. left a minor in a But you called him an state. informant, so you have to back that up with something. So um that's kind of an inside joke. I don't have any kind of proof that he was an informant, but everywhere we went we were driving and he'd be like like especially through Wyoming with all the refineries and stuff and he'd be like, Hey let's pull over and go fuck that place up or like do we have anything we can make a bomb with? We could go fucking put it in that refinery. And we're just like, shut the fuck up, dude. Like, what are you talking about? Like, and he just like always like suggests these things that were just like, why are you bringing this up? Um, you know that we don't do that shit, but you're always trying to get us to do it. So, and at the time we were pretty good friends with Tom Frampton, who had a lot of songs and messages in his music about people who will, be informants and go into groups and get these ideas planted and started and help implement them. And then they'll arrest everybody and the informant will walk free, you know? So we just decided on our drive back after we left them, we were like, yeah, that kid was an informant. Well, like I wouldn't, (laughs) but I wouldn't like more of an inside joke. Yeah. I wouldn't do it now, but we used to call him informant to his face. Yeah, yeah, we did. I forgot. That was like another name that we had for him. Oh, okay. Because we never had, uh, we never used his real name. It was his name because he was so fucking bad at security culture. Yeah, he's a dumbass. Yeah, and so it's we're not flat out calling him an informant. Well, he was bad at activism too. Like he loaded up a bunch of. uh, He one day had a bunch of uh, light bulbs with paint in them. It's not anything that I ever did, but. Um, wink, wink. Uh, but he had a bunch of them in his backpack and, uh, was riding a bike or something and the cops stopped him and they're like, what are you doing out here so late? You know? And he was like, oh, I'm throwing these paint grenades at McDonald's billboards. (laughs) (laughs) And then he fucking arrested him, but he was underage. So his mom just came and picked him up and he was really good at security. (laughs) You got to give it to him for being honest, I guess. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> I hope he listens to this. No. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was sure fun times. Well, and you got, like, I mean, when I was 15 and 16, I was reading crime think shit and, like, openly talking to my friends about, you know, like, oh, we should do this banner hang and uh, over the top of some traffic lights and busy traffic and shit. And, like, so, you know, being a, when you're 15 and 16, you don't really think about that shit because... Okay, so so now you're a little bit older. What do you think of crime? Think. Um, I I don't really know. I got I enjoy reading stuff. Like I've read Off the Map a couple times. Um, I I love that book. Um, that's the one about the two traveler girls. Yeah, they and they uh, backpacked or hitchhiked all over Europe. Yeah. Um and yeah. Uh, my wife actually has a tattoo on her shoulder of the the crows from off the map. Cool. Um, but yeah, I, I I mean I like it. I read it. I check up on them here and there. I'm not all like I used to be. You know, basically a subscribing member. Every time something come out, I'd buy it and or order it. Um, but I met the I can't remember his name. He was the what band is the the guy that kind of like spearheads the whole organization. He's a singer of uh oh shit um my mind's blank catharsis really I don't know no no I don't think it's catharsis yeah I don't know some anyway it's a hardcore band anyway so 
um, yeah, so they we saw them play at Planet X Fest. Um, that was actually the sh- the parking lot of that show is when we told Griswold we were leaving him in, in Indiana. But we <laughs> met the singer guy, and I was like, oh, I really like everything you do and everything. And he just kind of like brushed off my compliment, like, and I don't have time for you. And I was just like, that's so stark contrast different than what I – and maybe he was busy, you know. I don't know. But, like, that just struck me as, like, holy shit. Like, he, write, he writes and puts out all this stuff that says, like, <clears throat> all this stuff about community. And then when somebody says, oh, you know, I, I really like what you do, he was just kind of like, eh, blah, 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 and walked off. So I just kind of st- – I wasn't into it as much from that point on. My, my biggest thing, and like, like I never really got into the crime thing stuff. It just seemed like everything was about tearing everything down, and nothing was about rebuilding anything. There was nothing about building a society. It was all about destroying society. Very romanticized. In a very way. romanticized. Uh-huh. Very. Yeah. You know. I like. I I can see that the the part that spoke to me was the the idea of like personal anarchy um where you're not trying to change the big there was a little element of it that was you're just imp- if if your idea of anarchism is what you believe you just implement it in your life as much as possible um and that that will eventually blossom into other things you know um kind of like inspire by example type stuff yeah, that, yeah. that's kind of what i took from it so that's yeah that's okay i mean what, i can see that and i believe that i i definitely believe you know, we have to be a living ideal of what we want. Not that we don't fuck up all the time, but you got to try your best. Yeah. I love their example of a, a potluck dinner um, where everybody brings an equal share of food. Everybody has their equal share and everybody helps clean up afterwards. And no one makes rules or is in charge as a, a small microcosm or example for how anarchy can work on a larger scale. Um I, I love that. I think about it almost every time I hear the word anarchy. Um, and that's, I just kind of apply that principle to everywhere that I can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I even like that. You can take that to the point of, you know, people showing up to a potluck might not have as much as others. So they might even bring less or nothing, but they can still share with the community, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so yeah. Totally. Yeah. That's that's what I took from it, but yeah. I, I haven't. Other than that, I haven't really done much readings other than Emma Goldman. But I, I do she's like, another one I have a really hard time with. Yeah, I take her in really small doses. Yeah, I, I could see that. But I just love that the whole romantic side of of um, anarchy is what really speaks to me. Like the whole like free spirited kind of hippiness of it. I mm-hmm. guess. <laughs> But I'm not a fucking hippie. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your bath salts? No. <laughs> the crystals. That's what they are. Crystals. Bath crystals. I tried oh, those I thought you were talking about something else. No, yeah, not, fucking... the, not the zombie bath salt. <laughs> <laughs> they don't fucking work, by the way. Goddamn no. crystal for deodorant. Well, even, even like a high name brand fucking chemical antiperspirant doesn't work well for me so well i because i remember it was uh i tried it when there was still was this late 90s the the big boycott against procter and gamble uh-huh. and there was like virtually no vegan deodorant anywhere mm-hmm. I, uh, thomas and main was the, an independent company back then and i tried their deodorant and it fucking gave me a rash so i'm like i guess i'll try this crystal <laughs> oh man i'm so freaking lucky you guys don't even know <laughs> I don't have to wear deodorant. Yeah. Yeah, you're like yeah, got some weird my, shit, right? Yeah, there's two types of sweat glands and one creates perspiration to uh to cool you off and then there's another one that creates the stink and the funk and my body doesn't perspirate out of the stink and funk of sweat glands. Are you fucking kidding me? No, it's actually pretty con- it's like I think it's like a one in, yeah, it's like ten percent of the population, and apparently forty percent of people who use deodorant don't need to because they just don't know. Yeah, and it has to. Yeah, Shay's Shay in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, if your earwax is dry and powdery, um, it's an indicator that um, you most likely have that that gen- that gene is switched off, um, and then if you have. Uh, ancestor and one of the things that causes it it's in it and if you have those two things it's an indicator that you have native american 
uh, or African, I think is what it is, uh, ancestors. But if you have those ancestors, it doesn't necessarily mean that your that gene will be switched off. Hmm. Aren't but, we all yeah. from Africa, really? <laughs> We all came from the same primordial ooze somewhere, but no, I, 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 Israel came here, and Jesus did too, and all that business in the Book of Mormon. I just want to know if I can have a surgery to turn off this gland. Well, it's in your DNA. Yeah, sure, a surgery just to change to my DNA. Change your DNA, duh. Come on. That Here. sounds like a terrible '80s, early '90s Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. <laughs> She's got the J -J DNA. Uh -huh. It's not a sweat title. gland. <laughs> Terminator. Terminate the yeah. DNA gland. But so, yeah, I, I don't. I, I just will don't say wear deodorant. But... Uh, I was going to say uh, vegan deodorant sucks. Yeah, it does. I've never once bought a single stick of any kind of deodorant in my entire life. <laughs> so did you find I, out about this, like, at a young age? I just, well, my mom bought me, like, Old Spice when, you know, when you hit puberty. Your mm -hmm. mom's like, oh, here, you know, you got to start wearing this stuff. Because my brother's a smelly motherfucker. <laughs> like, he stinks really bad. And uh, I put on deo I'd put it on, and I'm just like, this stuff is such bullshit. I don't know, like, you know. And I, so I just stopped wearing it and just told my mom I was. And then after a while, I was just like, so I don't smell like B.O. Like my, like my brother does. She's like, no. I'm like, I haven't been wearing deodorant for, like, a year. And she was just like, huh. And then we'll go to the gym, and I'll, like, have a soaking wet T-shirt from the gym. And um, Shay will stick her nose right in my armpit and sniff and just be like, fuck you, and go in the other room, like, get all pissed <laughs> okay, off. Okay, so. I just don't stink. Your ball sweat doesn't even smell then. Um, not the fresh stuff, but when it sits <laughs> down there for a while, it starts getting kind of roosty. But I think that's just the, the sugars and stuff that my body excretes. I think the natural yeast on my body just kind of starts eating it. So as long as you're not a, a cheesy smell. It kind of smells and, like nooch. And your dirty taint. <laughs> my ball sweat smells like nooch is what I'm trying to say. Oh, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> Could be worse. That just reminded me I need to buy some nutritional yeast. Gross. <laughs> yeah, that nutritional yeast just keeps going up in price. It's so ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's like nine. I've to read $12 a couple dollars. like little things on trying to make it yourself, but everything gets really way too scientific way too quickly from my head. Yeah, you were you were you gave everyone too much hope when you said something about brewers. Yeah, I read like I say I read one thing and then like ugh, ten people are like, Tell us how you do it. I'm like, I don't fucking know yet. Like <laughs> Yeah. I throw away pounds upon pounds of uh brewer's yeast with my home brewing or our home brewing I should say. We throw it, pounds of it away and every time I do I think of that podcast where you're like, Oh yeah, we should make this out of brewer's yeast and I'm just like, I'm wasting nooch. <laughs> pouring it in the I, I will try to get more information because there's only been like I found like three papers and they were all like college level papers about yeast cultivation. Like it wasn't like there's like an is there's an active form and then a deactive form or something, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think once once you, you use brewer's yeast, it's already yeah, deactivated, right? Nu or... Nutritional yeast is a non-active yeast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been it's been heated and put in a centrifuge, like the yeast is dead. Yeah, yeah. And I think what it was is that the brewer's yeast would allow you to grow the the proper yeast for nutritional yeast to then. Yeah, well, it. all yeast is essentially the same thing when you. Break it down, yeah. Yeah, there's different strains, like basically different races of um, yeast. And so the paper I read was about you doing that, using the brewer's yeast to then grow nutritional yeast. Yeah, I've thought about just taking the yeast cake from the bottom of a fermenter and just dehydrating it and then using that as seeing if that would just work. And it would have like the, the hoppy and beer flavor in it, and that actually might be tasty. Hmm. But I don't have a dehydrator, so I think I think my so dad you, does. you you brew yourself, right? Yeah. How did like how does one sit down and be like, I'm gonna make beer. I'm just gonna do it. 
Um, I think it's just the whole DIY thing. Like you're not giving, uh, you're not giving tax money to the government. Um, and you can make five gallons of really high quality beer for about $20. Do you ever make liquor? Um, maybe. (laughs) Oh, oh, that's illegal, isn't it? I always forget. Um, I believe so. I've always wanted to make <laughs> liquor, like my own I'll, grain alcohol, just so I can make um, my own like vanilla extracts and almond extracts from scratch. Because I do that, but I buy the grain alcohol. But then I also yeah. want to make vinegar, and you know, then you take oh, the yeah, grain alcohol, which is just yeah, alcohol that's gone bad. I don't want the actual alcohol to drink. I want the alcohol to make those other two products. Well, I bet vinegar. That's what I'd say too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've I've made. <laughs> I've I've made kombucha and I I I'd, I'd assume that it's a very similar process to making vinegar. Kombucha is a sister well, to I'll, vinegar. I'll say this: um, it's not illegal to take malted corn and put it in a bucket with some water and throw some distiller's yeast in there and let it ferment out. And it's not illegal to make a still for distilling water so that you have a pure water source. Um. And it's actually really simple to do both of those things. You know, I've I've and it's been... not illegal to put the the fermented corn water or the 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 wash as it's called into the still. It's only illegal once you put heat on the still. So up until that point, pretty much good. But then you just got to remember that alcohol or water boils at two hundred and twelve degrees, and alcohol boils around one seventy three. And you just want to catch the steam before it turns to 212 degrees and condense it down back to room temperature. And you might make some moonshine. It's also very important to realize play, play that, that moonshine song the now. very first portion that comes out, you want to discard. Yeah. Um, yeah, because uh, as, the, as it heats up, and, and I, I'm, I'm not speaking from experience or anything, just for the record. Um, but the first runnings of it contain different alcohols that uh, boil at a lower temperature than ethanol. So um, it can contain – basically, if you were to drink it, you might as well just drink a- acetone. Because, yeah, yeah. It, it'll make you go blind. And it's I've important been... to condense the steam as it comes out because if the steam's just coming out and if you're using it in a uh, closed environment, like, say, a garage um, – you would be uh, breathing in these alcohol fumes, and it gets you pretty fucked Getting up. Really drunk. Yeah. <laughs> really <laughs> fast, too. Let's just, just think of that moonshine show on the TV, on the television. That's that such have. bullshit. Yeah. I know it is. <laughs> They're like, oh, I'm making moonshine, running from the law. This is where I work during the day. It's like, <laughs> my name's fuck? Jeb, and here's my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, from what I've read, it's pretty simple to make your own alcohol. I've been reading a lot on making my own still. I, <clears> I really, I think I'm going to do it. Well, you live in uh, like Daybreak, right? Yeah. Thanks for telling everyone. Oh, you can. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't now. fucking care. <laughs> um, no, uh, I may or may not know of a location where you can learn more about that stuff in Harriman, but we'll <laughs> talk about that later. <laughs> Yeah, we'll we'll talk about that. <laughs> Jesus Jeez. Christ! Well, it's a water still. It's just for making distilled water. But it's well, the same what concept. else would you use it for? Well, we yeah, use distilled anything water else is illegal. Soap. I don't know why you want to. Yeah, if we could make our own distilled water and then use it to make our soap, it'd be great. Then all I'd have to learn how to make is lye. There you go. Do you make lye? I thought you buy lye. Or you do buy lye. You, don't you have to mine it or something? I think lye comes from like carbon, like burnt carbon. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't know what lye is, apparently. Like ash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Snowflake on the water, <laughs> not water on the snow. Anyways, we're already at an hour and we haven't even talked about 643 oh, yeah. or anything. So yeah, you do six four three. What the yeah. fuck is that? Uh, six four three is a podcast. Uh, myself, uh, Camden, who is your intern, and Ian, who has been on which side before? I think 
Um, <laughs> yeah. Back, like, he was our first, first guest. episode. Yeah. yeah. God, but, those were terrible. Yeah, but we sit down once a week and just kind of talk about sports. We don't, it's not a sports analyst show or anything. We're not talking like, if you want to win a football game, you got to get the ball into the end zone and keep the team, the other team from doing the same thing. We don't say that shit, but um, we just kind of, basically, we just all like sports and we sit down and talk once a week and bullshit and we usually end up talking about sports. They're almost always. <laughs> and there's... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say I don't think that there has been an episode where you don't. <laughs> yeah, there was one where we were talking about a wacky religious thing, and then it quickly turned to sports talk. <laughs> <laughs> you just relate everything in your life back to sports. Yeah, and it seems like for some reason we always end up talking about Carl Malone and the Jazz Bear. I don't know why, but <laughs> we do. <laughs> Tom Lose I I, I eat, know you guys egg, were talking. Like I, I listened a while ago and you guys were talking about the jazz bear, and I had no idea that it was like a prominent figure in like mascot world. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's pretty popular among mascot enthusiasts. I would say. Really? Yeah, I was listening yeah. to that episode and I was like, I had no fucking idea. Yeah, he's. But then in... again, I took my daughter to a jazz game because she was begging to go, and so we got my corporate tickets and um. After the whole game, I'm like, did you like it? She's like, I liked the bear. <laughs> yeah, he's really the best part of the jazz games, like, because he almost dies, like, every game because he's doing crazy shit. He does do crazy shit. he rides shit. on a motorcycle. What other mascots can really say that? Yeah, rides a, a Harley on the basketball floor. I've seen him on the freeway on the Harley. <laughs> yeah, he'll ride to games on his Harley. <laughs> so, you might know this more. It, is it? The same person that's been with them for a long time? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, um, Shay's teacher was married to him, or is, like, one of her elementary school fourth grade huh. teachers, she says. Um, she never said she was, but it's blaringly obvious. And then, um, yeah. But it's, so. it's, to my knowledge, it's been the same guy, and he's really secretive about his identity and everything. Huh. I wonder how well a mascots get paid. I'm sure they get paid a lot. And he he's he's very like he's developed that character into like he's kind of like this like badass bear. Yeah, thing, when the it's... the bees have the the jazz bear days, and when they do that, um, they usually sell out because everybody goes to see the jazz bear and not the bees. <laughs> They have jazz bear days. Yeah, they have the jazz bear come and do mascot stuff at the bees games because it's a, the the Miller family owns the bees and the jazz. Yeah, so we're he'll actually just show talking. Up. They'll sell they'll sell out the stadium when when he's there. And, and for anyone who doesn't know, like our friend, the usual John in New Zealand, the bees are a local Triple A baseball team. Yeah, yeah, they're That's the Triple A w- affiliate of the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. They I used, did not know they that. They used to be the Twins. <laughs> Uh yeah, they, that was the buzz. That maybe. yeah, they were called the buzz then. It was it was what the slug what the stingers the bees the buzz we we're not very original. Yeah, <laughs> we're the beehive state. That's what There's been do. a major league baseball team that was called the bees, but yeah, they've since changed their name. I think if we're gonna talk about sports for a second, I think they should change the jazz logo back to a fucking jazz uh music insignia they did oh like fuck. two seasons ago <laughs> you been never mind then yeah, it's, it's not the same one anymore. it's it's a little bit different but it's the the music note for the j didn't your didn't your grandpa design that or something no he didn't design it he what he did is when they first came to utah he designed the center court at the salt palace okay yeah that's different yeah <laughs> His it was his ad agency that took it over there. Okay, and he was in yeah. yeah. So, who's your favorite mascot? My favorite mascot. Yep. Um, I'd have to. I don't even like the Utah Jazz, but I'd have to say the Jazz Bear, and then especially the when the Sacramento Kings are playing the Utah Jazz, it's really fun. Uh, but if you want to know more about that, you can listen to Six Four Three because we talk about it quite extensively in an episode. But yeah, for sure. <laughs> So how can people get in contact with you and follow your work? Um, 
Six four three is on iTunes. Um, we're not on Stitcher yet. Everybody's always like, "Oh, I can't find you on Stitcher." It's like we're lazy. Um, but uh, yeah, but we're on iTunes. There's six four three podcast dot com. You can either do the number six four three or spell out six four three, and you'll go to the same place. That's fancy of you guys. And they're part of the Witch Side Media Collective. Yeah, we're part of that thing too. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> And that's at whichsidecollective.com. Dot org. Dot org. Fuck, I don't remember. Yeah. And then we had a consensus meeting about it. With lots of emails that basically yeah. all said, I don't give a fuck. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's how consensus works, right? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, we're on Facebook and Twitter. Same 643. I think it's the numbers on both of those. So kind of confusing. Sweet. You mind... uh Saying fuck shit damn for us this week? Uh, yeah. Fuck shit damn. Awesome. Sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good one. Have a yeah. good night. See ya. This week we heard... DJ Son! Marks and Turkeys. Right now you're listening to Mochi Pet. Yoshi's Dinosaur Egg Hunt. <laughs> and as always... El Comandante, <laughs> which side are you on? iTunes. We're saying this every week. Let's just get it out of the way. Go. Thank you for rating and reviewing. Wow, that was really nice of you to say about me. I do like my teeth. They are pretty nice teeth. Add us on all the social media networks. We often provide extra content on there that we don't provide on the podcast or any of the collective shows so please check it out and maybe we'll do a giveaway or something you know what any non-member right now if you tweet at which i pod hey i heard this you get a free month membership so tweet it facebook it but and we'll hook you up just say hey what up because you you stayed and you listened yeah. We'll give you a free month. We'll show you what's up. Yep. Uh, I want to read your shirt. It says, saying, fuck shit down this week. Hasa Diga Eagle Way. Hasa Diga Eagle Way. I love that it's gibberish. I, that really it, it upset bugs, me. It bugs me, but the fact that it's it has the meaning behind it now anyway. It means fuck you God anyway, no matter what. Yeah. I'm wearing a shirt that says big and bold, fuck you God across it. In gibberish. But everyone yeah. that knows what it means knows what it means. Yeah. So yeah. it's awesome. It's a pretty, it's a pretty nice shirt. Fuck. Shit damn. Which Side is produced by the Which Side Media Collective.